In American history, few figures have been as influential and charismatic as George Hearst. Born in 1820, Hearst rose from humble beginnings to become one of the Old West's most prominent millionaires. His indomitable spirit, business acumen, and relentless pursuit of success brought him to the pinnacle of wealth and power in the 19th century mining industry. In this video, we dive into the life of George Hearst, a millionaire of the Old West and father of a mining company. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. George Hearst was born September 3, 1820 in Sullivan, Missouri, the first child of William and Elizabeth Collins Hearst. Two years later, his sister Martha was born, and then his younger brother Philip, who was unfortunately disabled from birth. From an early age, George worked on the family farm and received minimal formal education. Although Hearst loved books throughout his life, he was only capable of rudimentary reading. However, Hearst filled the gaps in his formal education by observing local mines, reading mineral information from books by his GP, Silas Reed, and mining in his spare time. At the age of 26, George faced a major test. His father, William Hearst, died, leaving behind a large debt from creditors. Without hesitation, George shouldered the responsibility of taking care of his disabled mother, sister, and brother. Not long after, George embarked on a series of ventures that greatly increased the profitability of this farm. In addition, he also ventured into the commercial sector by opening a small shop and renting out some potential lead mines. These mines, known as the oldest economic activities in the country, have been active in the Missouri area since 1715. George's passion for mining dates back to his childhood, and the purchase of a lead mine prompted him to delve deeper into mining. Under George's wise management, the mines flourished, yielding a great deal of lead and copper. In just two years, he successfully settled his late father's debt. By 1850, George had earned enough to support his family. It was at this point that he announced his intention to go to California to consider mining for gold. It is worth noting that his decision was made after the unfortunate passing of his disabled brother. Despite the opposition of his mother and sister, George's determination remained strong. In May 1850, Hearst organized a carriage convoy, accompanied by the support of his cousins, Jacob and Joseph Clark. Together they began their journey west to California. After a long and arduous journey, they finally reached the town of Placerville in October. Seeking respite from harsh winter conditions, they established a makeshift camp in Jackass Gulch. However, their efforts to exploit Placer in the winter yielded meager results. When spring came, they decided to move to Grass Valley, California. It was in this picturesque spot that they stumbled upon an abundant gold-bearing quartz deposit at a site known as Gold Hill. Then Hearst's luck came when he stumbled upon a quartz quarry overflowing with gold between Grass Valley and Nevada City. Seizing the opportunity, he named the new mine Merrimack Hill after a river in Missouri. Drawing on his previous lead mining experience, Hearst quickly devised innovative methods to mine gold in the most efficient way. When the Merrimack hit the water, it temporarily stopped mining. Fortune smiling upon Hearst again when he discovered another rich area, which he aptly named Potosi. Leveraging the profits made from his mining endeavor, Hearst became co-owner of the first theater in nearby Nevada City and later established a general store in Sacramento. However, the store's performance was inefficient and a subsequent flood during the winter forced Hearst to sell it in the spring of 1852. Undeterred, he returned to the mountains. Hearst then made a substantial profit by selling both the Merrimack and Potosi mines. After the next five years, he and the Clarks kept searching for promising mining sites, developing the mine for a quick time to sell them at the best price. This cycle keeps repeating. 
1857, Hearst found the immensely prosperous Lecompton Mine near Nevada City. In the summer of 1859, Hearst learned of promising silver trials in the Utah Territory and tested them in Nevada County, California. Hearst rushed to Washoe County in the western part of the Utah Territory where he arranged to buy one-sixth of the profit of the Ophir Mine there, near present-day Virginia City. That winter, Hearst and his partners mined 38 tons of high-grade silver ore, drove it across the Sierra on mulebacks, smelted it in San Francisco, and made $91,000 in profit, or about $3.3 million at 2023 dollar prices. When the first batch of silver was smelted from Ophir, it created the Washoe fever as thousands of miners flocked from California to Nevada. Soon, the whole area was known as the Comstock Lode. Along with his extensive mining projects, Hearst continuously acquired large tracts of land in the western region, especially in California. Furthermore, he has ventured into large cattle and ranching operations, cementing his presence in various industries. In any field, he was remarkably successful. At the height of his career, Hearst received word that his mother was ill and returned to Missouri in June 1860. During this time, he reacquainted with Phoebe Apperson, a beautiful 18-year-old neighbor. The 42-year-old Hearst married her two years later on June 15, 1862. That same year, Hearst and his new bride moved to San Francisco, where they lived at the Lick House, a popular hotel. The couple then had a son on April 29, 1863, William Randolph Hearst. As George continued to tackle his mining business, Phoebe remained in San Francisco. Despite his lack of any prior political experience, Hearst's abilities were recognized and he was nominated to the State Assembly as a Democrat in 1865. Representing San Francisco, he began a two-year term. During his tenure, he made a key acquisition, the 48,000-acre Piedra Blanca Ranch in San Simeon, California. In addition, he acquired several adjoining farms that later became the famous Hearst Castle. In 1875, when news of the discovery of gold came from the Black Hills, Hearst's interest was piqued. The fact that the Manuel brothers discovered a large gold mine in what would soon become Led's Gold Camp prompted Hearst to send someone to investigate. In 1877, he personally ventured to Deadwood, where he teamed up with Hagen to purchase the mine from the Manuel Brothers, naming it the Homestake Mine. Expanding its holdings further by acquiring additional claims in the Deadwood area, Hearst quickly transformed the mining operation into a thriving commercial venture. His activities in the area have earned him the title of the largest producer in the Black Hills and a leading contributor to the U.S. gold production. In early 1866, when Senator John F. Miller passed away while in office, Hearst was quickly appointed to the vacant position. Then a popular vote elected Hearst to the Senate in November 1886. At the time, he and Phoebe resided in Washington, D.C., on February 28, 1891, George Hearst died at age 70 in Washington, D.C. The California legislature and state courts adjourned so officials could attend his funeral. After her husband died, Phoebe Apperson Hearst inherited his estate. She donated a lot to help establish new libraries at several universities. George Hearst is buried at Cypress Lawn Memorial Park in Colma, California, his wife and son were also buried there afterwards. To honor his memory, the Hearst Memorial Mining Building on the Berkeley campus is a testament to his achievements and contributions to the mining industry. In 1996, George Hearst was inducted into the Hall of Great Westerners of the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, confirming his lasting impact on the history of the American West. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.